Hey, Vern, old buddy. Good to see you could make it. And uh, you keeping an eye on Sparky? Because, uh, oh, no, I see he's been into my crudo glass. Hey, Sparky, I told you to stay away from my good glasses. Well, you've been up all night into the scotch as well. You're going to have to start behaving yourself. Or you're going to end up like Vern up on the wall. So we're going to show you where the uh, McCallum Distillery is uh, in the Craig Gallaghy area there. And of course, there's many distilleries in the Speyside Craig Gallaghy area. Dufftown, and of course you have uh, Aberlour, and there it is. Craig Gallaghy, and we'll find right about there is McCallum's. Well, uh, we're going to get into a very well-known brand. You all know it. Yes, McAllen's. Um, McAllen's, don't drink as much of it now. Uh, when I was first getting into the single malts, this was one of my favorites. Uh, is it the same? I really don't know. I don't have any of those old bottlings, so, but I sure liked it. It's not necessarily my go-to today, um, though this one here seemed to do quite well. And I always ask that question: Could be this? Could this be the last of the affordable, good Macallans? You know, and you know, we're, we know you can pick up the twelve. You know, the 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 twelve-year-old their regular bottling, but this is the sherry cask, and it is a little bit different because I've got the twelve-year-old regular bottling. I mean, they're both finished in, in, in sherry cask, but this one is distinguishable. It's a 43. I think the other is a 40. And uh, you're wondering what the Delmore will like. We just did a, uh, a Delmore review, and this Delmore here is a sherry cask as well, and they're both 12 years. So when I'm finished the review, or toward the end of the review, I think I'm going to do a little shootout between the two here. I'm just curious which one I prefer. So anyways, uh, we'll get into it and we'll get it, we'll uh, s sort of do a brief history of McAllen's. Um, McAllen's is, is, is a Speyside uh, distillery and it was started by Alexander Reed in 1824. I think there was a, a illicit distilling going on there, you know, in the 1700s, but um, it, you know, it was a farm distillery like a lot of the distilleries. They uh, it, they really couldn't make the money farming that they could make uh, distilling whiskey. So if you were a farmer, you probably were distilling and you were probably evading the gougers. Those were, were the, uh, they were the excise people that were, you know, the tax people. But uh, anyways, uh, the Excise Act was in 1823. So 1824, Alexander Reed takes out the, the, the license and basically uh, he was he was operating two stills out of a, a wooden shed, pretty basic. And um, in 1847, the license was taken over by a fellow by the name of James Shearer, a priest, and James Davidson. Now, in 1868, James Stewart acquired the Alchies lease and rebuilt the distillery. And uh, it's interesting because uh, the famous. Uh, writer that, uh, you know, visited just about every distillery in Scotland, Alfred Bernard. In his book, he has a very short entry, probably the shortest entry, on, uh, on Macallan. And he basically described Elchie's distillery as just an old-fashioned establishment similar to a lot of the other Speyside distilleries. Uh, nothing spectacular. But, um, James Stewart sold Alchies to Roderick Kemp. That was in 1892. And, and, th and this guy had uh, expanded the Telesker uh, distillery quite successfully. And he recognized uh, Alchies' potential. So he modernized the site and he increased the production. 
and he would rename it McAllen Glen Livet, though that Glen Livet su suffix was dropped in 1980. So uh, after Kemp's death in 1909, the Roderick Kemp Trust was established to secure the family's future ownership of McAllen. And uh, from the 1950s onward, McAllen Distillery has been continually expanding, increasing to five stills in 1954, and then more significantly, uh, significantly in 1965 when the new still house doubled the number of stills from six to 12. This expansion continued throughout the 1970s, and then eventually 1971 it had 21 stills. Now, the, the stills are the core of McAllen's individuality and whiskey character. Uh, they're small, they're, they're only four meters, 13 feet actually, uh, in height. But it also contributes to uh, McAllen's malt style because uh, with less contact between the vapor and the copper, uh, you, you get a heavier oil and a rich spirit. And of course, McAllen's popularity as a blending malt was, was, was really big. It really boomed in the 60s and the 70s. But all good things come to an end. And in the early 1980s, the famous Whiskey Lock, it, 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 it killed the success of a lot of the uh, distilleries. <coughs> and, uh, you know, some survived, some didn't. But uh, McAllen decided to go a different direction, and they opted to focus on this emerging single malt uh, market that uh, companies like Glenfiddich were doing. And so um, they, they ended up mothballing that second still house that they, when they expanded, and uh, they started very pretty much focusing on their single malt bottling. It started off with an 18 year old uh, expression. And uh, the, the Japanese uh, Suntory Group purchased 25% of the McAllen stocks, and the remaining 75% of the stocks were purchased by Highland distillers. And uh, eventually, 1996, uh, they took over uh, Kemp's ownership. That was the end. Of the, of the Camp family's involvement with McAllen's. Now the McAllen farm uh, was restored so they could resume, resume the bar barley production and they grew this uh, special grain, it's called Golden Promise Barley. I think they use it as well as Glen Goyne. I think they're the only distilleries that use that high grade uh, grain. In 1987 the, um, the, the uh, company partnership between Edmonton and William Grant and Sons uh, basically purchased Highland Distillers, uh, 601 million pounds. And Edrington would become the major stakeholder in McAllen, alongside minority shareholders William Grant and Sons and Suntry. Here it is, McAllen's Sherry Cast. Now, I, I had a 12 not too long ago, and um, I did drink a little bit of this, and I will say that this is definitely a little stronger sherry influence than the 12, even though the 12 is also finished in, in sherry cast. But um, this has definitely got a little more body to it, a little, it's, it's, it's an oilier uh, whiskey, but let's get into it. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, get uh, some descriptors and notes going so we can talk about it. So, um, pour myself a dram and um, I do like the McAllen's bottle. There's something about the feel of them. I, you know, through the years, one of the first whiskeys I really, I started paying attention to, and I just like this. I like the shape of them. Uh, they're classy looking. They feel good. Um, you know, they uh, they come in a classy looking box. Um, the box definitely improves as you get into the 18s, the 15s, and the 18s. Uh, but you're paying a heck of a lot more for that whiskey. But um, this might be the last of the affordable, so that's why I'm putting that question to you. Uh, is this the last of the affordable good McAllen's? So um, we're looking at, you know, anywhere from 225 to 250 dollars in Canada here for the 15s, and 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 the 18s are just <laughs> they're out of sight now. So. Uh, my son bought me 18s. I had used to have my uh, uh, my fish buyer. I was a commercial fisherman. My fish buyer would buy me 18s. It tells you what an 18 used to be worth. They wouldn't be buying them for me today, I'll tell you. So, anyways, let's give it the nose. It 
And again, uh, you, you really can get the sherry influence here. Very strong. Lot, lots of prunes. Prunes and plums. You know, so they're, they're, you're sort of getting the dry, the dark dry fruits mixed in with the, uh, the fresh fruits. And there, it, there is just, you know, a slight bit of a, a slight bit of smoke. It's not medicinal smoke. It's just smoke. And um, I, I'm sort of um, I'm getting the sweetness and a little bit of tartness. A um, little bit of ginger mixed in with that sweetness and that tartness. And of course, you know, you got to throw the vanilla in. The wood's starting to work. The oak, yeah, the oak's definitely there. I'm not, I, I, my nose isn't picking up that famous grain that golden grain that they uh, that is unique to um, to Macallan. So just to remind you that um, this has no coloring in it. It's a 43% ABV. I did read the label earlier. I could not find anything on whether it was non chill filtered or not. So. But, um, yeah, I think uh, we're going to, uh, let's see what the palette's all about. Slash, eh? It's, it, it, the sherry is there. Um... There's definitely some some wood. I'm, I'm getting some of the wood, and um, slight bit of um, smoke, or it could be char from the barrel. I don't know, <clears throat> but there is a little bit of smoke. You, you can just barely taste it. Eh? It's kind of sitting in the background there. So spices. Uh, I would say uh, we're getting a little bit of that honey influence. Uh, in other words, honey, honey mixed with the fruit. Uh, it's a sweet drink. Let's refresh. The, the smoke has kind of disappeared now, and um, I'm, I'm getting uh, some sweet spices. Um, uh, the, 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 the when I say the sweet spices, you know, um, almost some cinnamon, cinnamon, and um, maybe a little ginger. You know, a little bit of a, a ginger burn there. Or is it uh, pepper? Uh, definitely a little bit of the hot spices as it's finishing off here. But um, it's, 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 it's kind of like a sweet and sour presentation at the beginning. And it's kind of finishing off with the more spicy, sweet and spicy to almost a um, little bit of little bit of heat uh, in the spices. Um, it's not the liquor. It's not, it's not, uh, I'm not getting the heat from the liquor. It's just, it's spicy, hot spicy. So, um, not jalapeno hot, you know. Um, I think the best description is like a ginger hot, you know, like, you know, strong ginger. But, <clears throat> um, this is nice. It's well layered. Um, oh my golly. I'm going to have to pour myself some more here. I didn't pour enough. Uh, give, give myself a little break. Let my uh, palate kind of clear a bit here. It is a nice dram. I haven't, like, I, I drank this with friends, and you can see I haven't drank much. 
and uh, I haven't ever had this cast, I have never had this uh, bottling before. So this is actually the first time I've really got into uh, tasting notes and that. And I, I mean, I sort of had a bit of an idea that it wasn't a bad, uh, and that, you know, when I, when I said, is this the last of the affordable McCallums? You know, I, I think because we all kind of, when we were drinking, it kind of wondered, you know, what's it cost? You know, 150-ish. Uh, and that's the same as the Delmore there. But uh, anyways, uh, back to the finish. Oh, we're getting some toffee now. I think the other day there when I was uh, doing, what was the last review I did? Um, ah, it was a it was a Glen Grant, 18 Glen Grant, that's what it was, yeah. So it was a non-sherried, uh, it was a non-sherried uh, uh, presentation, uh, but there was so much sweetness, uh, you know, in that um, American oak, so. Um, this is a similar ABV, but different in that you've got so much sherry happening here. But a little bit of the uh, the toffee. I, I, I got a little bit of the toffee there. So, And now I'm getting that... Uh, I think it's char. I think it's a barrel char that I'm tasting. Yeah, the wood. I'm getting the wood now and the spices. So the spices aren't as sharp. They're a little softer. And um, this is a decent finish. Uh, the the regular 12, the 40 ABB 12 does not have as long a finish as this does. So um, we can we can put that in for a score there that you know when we rate this. So it does have a, a longer a longer finish. So it's finishing off with. Uh, Wee bit of that, uh, I'd say it's char, smoked char, char barreled, uh, that are toasted, the toasted barrel, and some spice. Um, it, it's a, it's one of those, it, it's one of those drams that you won't have another one. So that's a good sign. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready to rate this here, um, but I want to do a shootout first. <laughs> before I rate it. So I'm going to pour myself a Delmore. Now I, I reviewed the Delmore. You can look at my review on the Delmore. And um, this was the first Delmore that I really felt good about. Like it was, I, I, I wasn't a super Delmore fan. I thought they were overpriced. Uh, wasn't really getting what I was paying for. So this was the first one I felt I felt like I, I got good value for my money. I liked it. Uh, my palate liked it. So, I've been kind of wanting to do this. Okay, so here's my opportunity. <laughs> um, Delmore McAllen. Okay. It, the, my no, the nosing is going to be fairly fast here. A little more floral, uh, still you know very strong cherry influence there, but a little more floral. The the sweet the sweet uh, fruits are still there, but sweeter, much sweeter. Yeah, um, we're getting uh, the dark fruits. Oh, light and. Uh, Oh God, I, I almost forgot my notes, but there's tangerines, a little bit of uh, citrus. This is lighter. This is definitely a lighter drink than Delmore. And this is a heavier, uh, much heavier body, oily. There's, there, this is hitting you, this hits pretty heavy. This is amplified. So the nose on this is quite strong, you know. 
This has the lighter nose. But uh, nothing wrong with it. It's just a, uh, it's, it's a different, um, it's just a different engagement. Yeah, you're getting, uh, like I say, floral, uh, tangerine, citrusy. Um, almost perfumey. <laughs> And boom, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Lots of sweet. This is when I get the eat more, the eat more uh, uh, chocolate bar. Or maybe it was the the the. Maybe I should be saying McTavish's uh, toffee. Yeah, more McTavish's toffee. That's probably that's a good description, you know. So there you are. Um, let's try the palette. <laughs> Slanger. Pretty much the same. Now I'm starting to get familiar with this. Um, um, there, you know, there is a sweetness to it. And I think because I didn't have the uh, McCallum's, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this shootout. I would have probably said, yeah, there's some good sweet notes there. You know, I probably would have said a little honey. Uh, some uh, you know some uh, sweet and sour notes uh, like the fresh fruits and the and, and the dried fruits, but um, um, definitely a lighter. I think it's going to be a. I, I don't know yet, but I got a feeling it's going to be a lighter body. But wow. So. My daughter's on a diet. She's um, going for the low cal. <laughs> I'm not on a diet. I'm going for high calories. I mean, that's what it tastes like. It's like, you know, lightly sweet, light, lighter drink, heavy impact. You know, I'm going for the cheesecake. Yeah, there's, there, there's definitely a, a, a contrast, and, and, and you, you don't know this until you, you, you do that shootout, so it's, it's interesting. Uh, it, it, you you want to do this once in a while. It, it's, kind of, it's kind of exciting, so let's, uh, I don't, I don't, I want to leave a little bit of uh, room in between the two there, a little time in between the two, because this is overpowering, and um, I could, you know, uh, I, I, I could clear my palate. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get too tactical with this. This is a fun thing. Um, you know, I don't want to waste, waste your time. <laughs> I do like this. Um, light or not, I do like this. It's a very smooth drink. It's a nice Delmore. You know, I've, uh, I'd probably take less time between the Delmore and the uh, McCallum, but I'd need more time between the McCallum and the Delmore. <laughs> There's a, just after you've had the McCallum, you need to kind of clean, clear your palate. But um, even though there is a coating, the the Delmore leaves a coating on on your on your tongue, especially in the back of your tongue there, and uh, very slight. Very, very slight burn for a 43 there um, off the Delmore there, so. Sherry. Very, very strong influence of Sherry. Uh, Stuart McPherson's work in selecting casks, I guess. Um, We got Richard Patterson, his selection of casks. Two different approaches, two different distilleries, two different types of stills, two different types of drinks. They're both good whiskeys. So, um, this is a it's a McCallum's that I am actually liking. I'm enjoying it. It's the first McCallum's I've had in years that I've really enjoyed. And um, 
it's only a 12, it's not, I've had 18s, I've had 15s. And in the past, you know, if I go back a good number of years, because it was one of the earlier uh, single malts that I got into, after I got into Glen, Glen and, uh, and Glen Levitt. And I really liked this stuff. It was this stuff really blew me away. When I had an 18 that was given to me by uh, my fish buyer, it blew me away. It was, I mean, everybody that was having a shot of that whiskey thought, wow, this is, this is the best whiskey we've ever drank. I think it was, you know. This is not that, that. it's not that 18, but it's nice to get back to a McAllen's I'm really enjoying. So, um, what am I going to give it for a score? This is somewhere between an 86 and an 87. So, um, I'm going to say maybe an 87 for a 12, but, um, I'd say 86.5 if I could. <laughs> it's 150 bucks, but so is the Delmore. I think the two of them uh, are scored very close together. Really, uh, they're just different. Um, they're different presentations. So um, let's let's leave it at that.